Okay, first thing in the morning, I'm in my growing room right now, and I was gonna go ahead and do a little tour of it, show you my setup. First thing I'm gonna go ahead and show you is, this year I'm using square pots. They got holes on the bottom, they're square. They're not bad. They're not, they're not the best, but they're gonna last a couple years. So I got growing pots, I got, I think 450 of them. Um, what I go ahead and do is, let me move some of this out of the way. Okay, so what I go ahead and do is I get myself a tray like this a bin I put water in the bin see the water in the bottom and then I set all my pots in there filled up and they fit four across just like that fit in there nice and perfect and I'll fill this whole thing all the way across and all the way over um, then I'll go ahead and seed them. Okay, so to seed them, what I do is I go ahead and take a marker. I use a graphite. 9,000 pen. Um, it's a number 12, I believe, on here. Well, it's a 9,000 8B. It's really dark. So when you write on here with graphite, it doesn't fade like a Sharpie would out in the garden. Then at the end of the season, you could bring it in the house and you could go ahead with soft scrub or, or just soap it up and you could wipe it off and then you go ahead and you go right on them again. Um, now on my seed packs, what I like doing is after you open it up and you use the seed, I like closing them back up. So I use a little micro clip, I put it on the top, and I fold it down. So you go, these are the seeds that I just planted in here, and they all got those on top. And that, that seals them, so they don't go ahead and fall out. Then, of course, I got my seed and trays in here. And so, you know, you got the seeds. You can put them, they, the packs fit in there really nice. You can seal them. And then, then you can close them. And you can put them away. And if you don't want to get those, there's always baggies. You can just put them in. Take the air out and fold them. I like putting them like that so you can have your watermelons, your tomatoes, and so forth. So to plant, all I basically do is I take the pencil, I just push down in there just a little bit, I drop the seed in, cover it up a little bit, and you can see water is dripping out. Then I go ahead and take the label and I put the label on it. I try to keep everything in bins. So, so I can move the bins around. And I got a little platform that I can set stuff on. And these here up on top they were planted about a week or so. I posted online. Um, 
I had the tops on them like this, keeps the humidity in. And as soon as they sprouted, I took the tops off. And then I put them on top of the bin. They're pretty close to the light, not enough to burn them. Once, once they get a little taller, I'll slide this bin out. I'll go ahead and take some of these and I'll put them on the shelf. That will drop it down about four more inches. And I'll set the cover on those. And then once they get a little taller, I'll take these out and set, set that down on that. Um, some people take these lights and they lower them and they raise them. But, you know, you got a lot of wires and you'd have to play with each one. I like to just put my lights on permanently. My lights are LED lights. They're four foot long. Just like that. And on the end... What you do is you take a wire, this wire goes right into the end like that. And this end, once you mount your light, then you can take this end and plug it into the next light, the next light, and the next light in sequence. So when you want to shut it off, they all go off. When you want to turn it on, they all go on. Because they're in sequence. I always get the long cord. So it goes from one shelf to the next. And then I got shorter cords. Like this. And the shorter cords go from light to light to light. So that's my light and setup. I order extra cords and then you have your on and off switch. Each individual light could have an on and off switch or you could put them all on one and have one on and off switch. I utilize one so it's easier. So with that said, down, let me move this ladder. I got a few ladders in here. This is my favorite. So you can get up on it and you can check your plants and see everything from up from up high. <clears throat> if I'm doing something really tall, I got another ladder that I could get up on and go all the way to the ceiling. Um, they're 10 foot ceiling, so. And then the lights got little custom ends over here. And if you wanted to wire them different, you plug these in and you could go ahead and, and butt those ends or uh, wire twist them or solder them. <clears throat> and then you can have shorter runs <clears throat> and do custom work. I don't find that that's necessary in my setup. <clears throat> so, I keep the room The room is at 80 degrees first thing in the morning and it usually heats up to about <clears throat> 80 83 degrees during the day. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'll leave the room this temperature by shutting off the ceiling vent. And then I close off the entrance. So this room's closed off right now. The ceiling vent for the AC is closed off. So this room stays hotter because I'm germinating pepper plants and eggplants. And they like to be sowed and germinate at between 80 and 83 degrees. So it's perfect in this room for it. But once I take these off and raise it up, I open that vent up and the temperature in here will go down to about 77 degrees and that's perfect for growing. And then I, I take myself a meat thermometer like that. And 
turn it on, and I put it in the soil. Probably not going to be able to see it there, but I'll, I'll read it. Give that a second to get a little warmer over here. Okay, so it's 79 degrees right now. And during the day, that temperature is going to be 80 degrees. Let me put it up in this one here. Okay, same thing. So my soil temperature is good. Let me just put that down right, right here for now. Okay, so let me show you the plants. Okay, so once again on these, I got the covers on them. I got the I got the covers tilted so there's a little bit of airflow in there. Now over here <clears throat> you can see my tomato plants. Uh they're almost all sprouted, so I took the cover off. And over here I got some that are sprouting. As soon as I see them sprouting, I take off the cover. So I'll get it. I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the peppers and the eggplants once they go ahead and sprout. And these are some of my clippings over there. Okay, so Okay. So I have this foil which is attic foil. It's really thick. <clears throat> and I got this space in here so when I when I germinate seeds for trees, fruit trees, the trees could go ahead from the ground and they could grow up tall in here and don't have to worry about the shelf. So I leave this little space and I put lights up on the top of it. And this section over here, I don't have anything in these bins right now because this is my fall crop and a lot of seeds I'm going to sow direct sow in the ground when the time is right. Right now I direct sowed all my watermelons so I could have a fall watermelon crop. All my tomato plants, pepper plants, and eggplants are over here and they're sowed in here. Now in the spring all of these bins will be full 100%. And, of course, there's videos online and photos online from when I did that. I utilize this right here, this cover. As you can see, it comes down. And that closes off the inside like that. So the reflection is nice and bright in there. And it holds a little bit more heat in there. I have a floor heater that I put under it. And when I put that floor heater under it, it brings the temperature up in here hot to the temperature that I want. And the rest of the room could be cool. And these plants could be growing at the optimum temperature. Uh, right now, I don't have that on. And I usually keep all these off right now because I don't need all these lights on over here. Um, and what I do is I got everything.
I got everything plugged into a timer. As you can see, right here. Okay, so what that timer does is I have it set to come on at 4 a.m. and it shuts off at 8 p.m. So I don't have to do anything. The only thing I need to do is just make sure that everything stays moist. And that's easy to do. Just like twice a week, you could add a little bit of water. And when I add water, I add water in the trays like that. Can you see the water down in there? Here, let me lift this up. See the water? Okay, it's a little tight in here, as you can see. <laughs> I'm up here with the chandelier right now. So, um, anyway, that's how I water. I just make sure there's water in the trays and the water wicks up to the plant. And that's usually sufficient to keep everything nice and moist. Um, if I needed more room, I got the top shelves for storage. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what I went ahead and did is I got casters so I can move my shelves around and I put little tops on them. So if water spills, it hits the tops and it doesn't go on the casters and your casters will never rust. And then I just wipe the water up off of the floor. So as you can see that with the casters... You could go ahead and move the whole thing around. And since I was in here this morning, see that water? It's on top of that right now. I, I wiped it up from the floor. And the water doesn't go on to the, the barrens in the top and start rusting it. It just lays on that top. I think that's like pretty important if you want to keep all your shelves nice. Now, when I put them together, all my shelves were put in so I could use these high high top, the high rise bins, the tops on them, without, without hitting the light. And the light is up far enough where it doesn't get hit. It's flush right against the bottom over here. And um, as long as these big, big bins fit under them, I'm fine. But I do like these lower lower bins and they're good for small plants and since you don't leave this on all the time you take the tops off that's sufficient but what i do with these big bins when it comes time to move the plants outside i put all the plants in a big bin and i put the top on it they they clamp on and then I can stack all the bins up with plants in them. And then I can move all the bins onto my porch. Take off the top. They get air. They get sun. Once they harden up a little bit on the porch, then I can start moving them onto the lawn in the, in the full sun for a couple hours. Then move them back onto the porch. In the winter time, if it gets really cold and we're going to have a frost, I'll move them into the house. And then in the morning, I'll move them back outside. Then I'll move them into the sun. And it's just easier to move everything in the bins. And at nighttime, when, if you had to bring them into the house, you could stack them up five high. And they're not, you know, all over the place. They're five high. And the plants could be pretty tall in there. Once the plants get too tall, then you can't then you got to lay them out and you can't go ahead and um stack them up, but you know, at least for a while you'll be able to utilize them by stacking them up. And that's it. I don't know anything else in here that I could show you at the minute.
um, at the moment. But online, I, there's a file section on the group, Sunshine Harvest Edibles, and you could download my chart of all of my grow and set up and all of my tools that I utilize in the garden. And everything is what I use that I like that is listed. Anything that I bought and I don't like, I don't list it because I don't like it. So I only post what I'm using and what I'm doing and what I like. Um, my handle's the Frugal Hugel Gardener. So I like things to be frugal. So I try to get things that are good but cost effective. Um, I got a Hugel Garden out there, so that's where the Hugel is and then I'm a gardener. That's where the name came from. So I made the list and I posted the list and there's links in the list. So if anybody wants to get any of this set up, it's all on the list and you can see what I'm using. I like to make good use of my time. I have a big property. I have a big garden. Big Hugel culture section. I got a lake. I got tropical plants. I'm making the full property permaculture. I got truckloads of mulch coming in all the time. I'm turning that into compost. I'm picking up sheep manure and horse manure. I got the tractor going. I'm doing something just about every day for a half a day outside. I'm, I'm working it pretty hard. Uh, in the summertime, I cut back on time because it's too hot out there to do manual labor um, but I do get out there when the sun is first coming up and do what I can before it gets too hot so I like to utilize stuff that works and that cuts my time and my workload down if at all possible so I've been doing this for a long time so what I utilize works for me now, whether it would work for you, if, and if you like everything, that's, you know, totally up to you. So what I do is I just post what I'm doing and what works for me, um, sort of like a video log. I put it on my my page, and I put it on, into the group so people can see what I'm doing. As I'm working my land, I'm the steward of it. And I'm trying to do the best that I can um, to minimize my time. Plus, to get a really productive garden. And luckily, I've been able to do things right. And each year I get two crops, very productive. And um, if you want to duplicate what I'm doing, well, all you got to do is um, read a lot of the post that I post and you'll see what I'm growing and what I'm doing and what I'm utilizing and how I'm getting everything to grow like it is. Okay, so this is a, a little quick tour. Okay, so that was a little quick tour of my growing setup. And um, anyways, I like it, it works good. I feel that with the reflector attic foil It enhances the light from not only from the top but from the sides. In the winter time, there's windows behind there. It keeps the cold from coming in because it's a heat barrier. Um, so I really feel that if you can't afford this stuff, at least put aluminum foil up to direct the light all around. I'm a fisherman. If you ever go on a boat, and you got a hat on. In Florida, I always wear a hat. If you notice, my other hat has holes in it. It's because the sun beats down so hot on me that it just fades. And and anything in Florida, the material, it only even plastic, it only lasts about a year outside, and it degrades. Even my hats I wear, so I always wear a hat outside to keep the sun off of me. But in Florida, when you're fishing. You got the sun coming down this way. The sun hits the water and it reflects up and you get a sunburn from the water. Indirect sunlight. So the same theory over here. The light comes down. It hits the foil 
and I could be looking over here that foil is reflective even with these here it's reflecting to the side and it's coming down this way so my plants are getting light from the top and from the sides and maybe even up and under the leaves all I know is they do well they grow well and when I plant them outside in my good compost in my garden and I fertilize and I irrigate properly everything takes off and I have a beautiful crop so I hope um, what I showed you helps you go ahead and download that download the list and you'll see everything that I utilize